Hey everybody, this is Tom again in Western North Carolina, and this is going to be, I guess, think episode four on how to make a chair. Anyways, I'm going to show you a quick video on how I'm making a rung. Pretty simple process, but I'm going to show it to you anyways, and I might show a little bit about how to make a slap how I make slats. This is all, everything I'm doing is how I do it. Anyways, I've got a chunk of wood here that I split out from another part of that log I split the other day. I got some pieces that are long enough for a slat, and then this was a waist piece, but it's long enough for most of the rungs in this chair. Anyways, I've got it marked out how I'm going to split it. The sapwood on this tree is no good. The tree has been either dead for a while or something, and the sapwood is unusable. I wouldn't use them for rungs anyways, but it's got to get gone. So anyways, I've drawn on here how I'm going to go about splitting it, and I'm probably going to make, I hope you can see this, I'm going to make this split first. Then maybe this one and this one. This is waste here. And then this one. And then and then get these slat the sapwood off at some point. But I'm just gonna go about this and you can watch. It doesn't take but a minute. I've got my hatchet again. For you purists out there, I got a wood mallet this time. You guys that don't like me hitting my hatchet with a sledgehammer. Yeah, that split right down like that. And I'm gonna just gonna split this one here. Split right off. I'm gonna split this piece in half. Pretty much the rule to splitting is split down the middle if you can. I'm, I'll split a little more just so you guys can watch it. If you're this far into it, you probably know how to split by now. But a lot of people use a fro for this purpose. That's fine. I don't use my fro so much because this hatchet is sharp and it goes in a lot easier for one thing. And then it just acts as a wedge. See, this one's a little too wide. So I'm going to just split some of that off so I don't have to shave it off. Okay, you guys get the drift of that. So now I'm going to show you how I shave it out. There's a really nice split out rung there. But it's split, right? It's split right on the growth ring right there. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my draw knife out, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to slick that one side. It could be either side, but I'm going to slick that one up. It's right on the growth ring. So I've got one flat side. And then I'm going to turn it 90 degrees. And I'm going to try to put one of these other sides right on. I'm going to try to make this one 90 degrees to this one. 90 degrees. This one's a real easy one. I'll probably do another one. This one just pretty too easy. So there I've got two sides. This one and this one. 90 degrees. And I'm going to put it up like that. And I've got a little guide here that's three quarters of an inch right there i'm going to put a pencil mark on that side and a pencil mark on that side so i've got a pencil mark there and a pencil mark there and now i'm going to take that down to these those pencil marks Go down to the pencil line on this side. 
I'm taking the pencil line out. So there I've got that. Now I've got three sides. Both these sides here and this side. Now I just need to mark it. I mark it again to get the fourth side. So there I've got a mark there and a mark there. That I'm going to go down to. I'm, ta I'm taking the line out. If you leave the line in, your rung's going to be a little bit on the big side. There I've got a pretty good square. There's my line showing a little bit there. Where'd that go? There it is. Get that out. So there I've got a square. About three quarters of an inch in that inch. Now I'm gonna just put it on its up on its point and I'm gonna make it eight-sided. Just a couple of swipes on each side, each corner. We'll get that to be eight-sided. There's, there's an eight-sided rung roughed out. That's roughed out. I'm going to set that aside until it dries before I use it. Throw it down right there. I'm going to grab a little bigger one. See that one's a lot bigger. And same thing. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make one of these sides. I'm going to get one of these sides right onto the growth ring. And then I'm going to look at it, and this side here is a lot closer to being 90 degrees, so I'm choosing that one to go make my 90 degree side. Oh, dropped it. So then from that 90 degree side, I'm going to mark that off. And I'm going to get, take that down to the line. You might have just seen me, there's this Shaving horse has two positions. This head here is two, is not square, and so I have two positions. If it's too big, I can rotate that 90 degrees and get a different bite, different size bite. And I guess this might be the first time I've shown the shaving horse in this chair making video, but this thing has a ratchet here where you can make this go up and down real easy for different size pieces. But anyways, I've got it, got my lines drawn on this. bigger than that first one to start. It just took me a couple of minutes to get it to square. Got to get it to the line right there. That's square. Now I'm going to go to eight sides. Okay, that one's now eight sides too. And I'm going to set that aside. And I guess while I'm at it, talking about rungs, 
I always make an airfoil, what's called an, I call an airfoil for the, the rungs that go under the seat. And those rungs are basically twice as wide. When you rough them out, they're twice as wide as a regular rung. And so you would take a piece that looks something like this. I'm not going to do it right now. But you would take a piece something like this and do the same procedure. Get it flat, square it up, and then make it the thickness. Anyways, I did all my airfoils already off camera. And I did them using a joiner, a bandsaw, and a planer. That's how I do it. It just saves me a lot of energy. And that's how I do it normally. But you can do it just like I do these rungs. I could do it like this, but it's a lot of work. So anyways, I'm just telling you. So on this chair, you need three airfoils, 14 inches long. This is a cold piece of wood, so I'm not going to make one out of that. Anyways, you need your rungs. The rungs on the front of this chair are 17 inches. So you need two of them. And all the rest of the rungs, the longest of the rest of the rungs is 15 and 1 8. So you need to rough out six other rungs that are at least 15 and an eighth. And when I rough out rungs, I try to make them a little bit on the long side so you have some trim. You know, you can trim some off the ends when you go to uh, choose them to put in your chair to make them better. Anyways, while well, I've got this camera rolling, I'm going to show you a little bit about slats. Get my props in the camera. I didn't get ready very good for this. I was thinking about the rungs. But anyways, this is this piece here is the other end of the piece of wood that I got that rung blank off of. Now this particular log, the links of this log were cut up by another person and they weren't the ideal length but they did yield a length for a slat and a length for a rung so anyways that was fortunate and this piece these pieces seem to me to be good enough to make slats out of and the critical thing is the the critical thing is this distance right here that slat where my pencil go Right here. That slat come, ends up coming right out of this piece like this. Can you see that? I hope so. Anyways, this is just a sawed out piece. I measured here. The, the biggest slat is three and a half, so you need at least three and a half right there. Maybe you can't see what I'm saying. You need at least three and a half. And I... If you have a fresh tree, you can use the sapwood, but this tree, I can't use the sapwood, so I had to go inside the sapwood to here. You know, I did three and a half plus. Anyways, once you get to that point, then you bust off the sapwood. This piece is just like that one was, but with the sapwood busted off of it. And then I'm going to take this piece over to the joiner. And I'm going to run it on the joiner, this side here, and get a flat side. And then I'm going to run it through the planer to get this piece equally sized in this dimension right here. And that's what this piece is. It's been run on the joiner on this side. It's been run on the planer this side. This one didn't quite make it here. It was a little bit off, but... If I put the slats in this way, that piece, that'll get removed. But once I get to that point, what I do is I draw lines on the piece like this. And for me, that measurement between those lines is 5 sixteenths plus. 
So I guess that means it must be like 11.30 seconds. You know, 5 sixteenths plus, that'd be a, you know, plus means half of a sixteenth. So that's 11.30 seconds. That's how wide I cut, mark those. And I'm going to cut those on a bandsaw, all those cuts. I'm not going to show you that. But in another video, I'm going to show you what I do after I cut them. Well, what I do is after I cut them all out, I run them through a planer to get the thickness. And then I'm going to steam them and bend them. And I will show you the steaming and the bending in a later video. Maybe, might, might be the next very next video. But you notice I put a mark on here. And that mark, after these get steamed and bent, I will have, I will know that all these, I'll be able to match those up again and know that, you know, if I want to put them right in row with each other, I will be able to. And every piece that I do like that, you know, I'm going to do that piece and these three other pieces here, I put a different match mark on each one so that they don't get mixed up. Anyways, I'm going to call that a video right now. I haven't uploaded one. I've got an, another one to upload already in this one. And I hope you're doing well out there. This is like October the 18th or 19th, 2020. It's a bright sunny day outside, a little chilly, warm inside. But I'm thankful for it. And I hope you can be thankful for what you have too. And I'll be, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you another time. Thank you.